I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my House of Love! And following on from last week's Atop the House of Love, let's go all the way back to the beginning, at least in cinematic form, for this interplanetary invader. Intermediate, sorry. I give you Venom, the movie. Released in 2018, Venom tells the tale of the fall and rise of Eddie Brock, who goes from high-flying investigative reporter to the slums of the city before his instincts bring him into contact with something not of this earth that will change his destiny. Sadly, Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie a critic aggregate score of just 30%. But once again, critical scores are not the boss of your humble host. So let's take a wild ride into the midnight world of a lethal protector as we discover the cinematic origin of... Venom! Meet Eddie Brock. Investigative journalist, social conscience, thorn in the side of all that is rotten in the city of San Francisco. So why has he been sent to interview tech magnate Carlton Drake? Well, you know, tech bros. They love to show off. They like having their egos stroked. It's a shame, really, because any renter journo could have just done an easy puff piece and left it there. But Eddie can't contain himself, and quickly goes off script. And his perfect life quickly goes off the rails because of it. And six months later, our protagonist has hit rock bottom. But Drake is up to no good. His foundation, the Life Foundation, sent a manned mission into space. They found an asteroid teeming with life forms. They brought four of these life forms back for study, but one got free and crashed the ship. There were no human survivors, but they did manage to recover the three samples that remained in their containers, and now they're experimenting on humans. That's illegal. And immoral. But it won't make you fat. Quite the opposite, in fact. But someone on that team has a conscience. And she's Eddie's way back into this sorry tale. And in the belly of the beast, Eddie runs into an old friend. And makes a new one. Eddie's new friend helps him escape from Drake's compound. But you know what they say, you're not yourself when you're hungry. All of which leads us to the hospital. But Eddie's new friend doesn't like the MRI. Hmm... A quick wiki indicates that MRI machines use radio waves over actual sound waves. But I'm not that interested to research it in any sort of depth, so I'll just leave Hollywood to be Hollywood. But oh dear, someone ratted Eddie out. And his new friend is surprisingly capable. Eddie is predictably freaked out by this, and needs some space to deal with it, which regrettably conflicts with Drake's need to recapture the symbiote that bonded with Eddie and Drake's detail are rather insistent. But then Venom, the symbiote, is rather more insistent. Armed with the knowledge, Eddie goes to his old job and submits the evidence. But his last stunt caused consternation with the constabulary, and Venom's response causes apprehension in Anne. <sighs> Nothing but gristle and bitterness, his coppers. No good eating on him. And don't ask me how I know. I can only drink so many shots before blacking out, and none of them would be enough to tell you that tale. There's a meeting of minds for Carlton Drake. This is Riot, the symbiote that broke free of its containment and forged its own path to glory. It's considered something of a leader among the symbiotes that came to Earth, which is why it sought out Drake personally. But don't ask me how it knew about him, or if it could sense something in him. I couldn't tell you. But oh dear. Our heroes are forcibly separated in the hospital, which is bad news when Drake finally gets his hands on Eddie. And Drake starts monologuing, like he's going to try and talk Eddie to death. But Venom is a tricksy symbiote. And so the stage is set for our finale, as Drake... No, I'll rephrase that. As Riot is in kind of a hurry to get off of Earth. And it's symbiote versus symbiote in a battle to reach the rocket before it launches. But the weapon that almost kills Eddie becomes just the ticket to roast Riot and save the world. 
but at what cost? Well, apparently none, as we learn in the denouement. And Eddie has scored the interview of a lifetime. But that's another story. Anyway, that was Venom. And it's certainly not a family film, and it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. But you know what? For better or worse, I'm going to put this one into my house of love. This movie harks back to an earlier generation of superhero flicks, before Kevin Feige and the era of the cinematic universe, comic book movies were a lot more seat of your pants with the source material, and so it is with this movie. Which is no bad thing though, because of necessity, and the Spider-Man deal. And I don't even feel it all told. So let's get to the performances, specifically the tour de force of Tom Hardy, who plays a quick-witted, yet wide-eyed Eddie Brock, justifiably freaked out at what's happening to him when a rogue symbiote from beyond the stars hopped into his body, to coin a phrase, he's a street smart fish out of water plunged into a world that he never made. Contrast that with Riz Ahmed's Carlton Drake, a superficially charming tech disruptor who lapses slowly into Bond villain territory. Fitting though that he provides such a match for Riot, not that Riot has much in the way of characterisation outside of Final Boss. Of the support, Michelle Williams is an affable romantic lead in Anne Wayne, and Reed Scott's Dan Lewis Anne's new paramour is also suitably freaked out at this unidentified spit of black goo and what it can do to a human's physiology. The flow of the movie is simple enough, Eddie's journalistic instincts go up against the too powerful tech bro who crushes him like an ant, before he reaches Stuff It and ends up bonding with a symbiote. Cue hijinks, big final battle, fake out ending, sequel bait thing. The early scenes are only interrupted by the journey of Riot from the crash site in Malaysia to the meeting with Drake in his lab. This movie has Two big problems though, it's source material and originitis, though it does handle both quite well. The originitis in a breathless couple of scenes where they attempt to reclaim the symbiote by force and get roundly hammered, before trying to pin down Eddie on the streets, which also goes about as well as you'd expect. And it is of course quite a difficult task to make us believe that alien goo can become a super suit, but the movie does handle this quite well, even if it's more told than shown. And it does rather skip over the question of where these symbiotes came from and what they actually are. But there is one thing that you can't accuse this movie of being, and that is dry in any sense of the word. This is, in the kindest way, a real popcorn flick. Guns, cars, explosions, CG on CG fistfight for the big action climax. It's got blockbuster written all over it. And yes, it's gory, it's squicky, being that bodily invasion by an alien symbiote would be a lot to take in for the best of us. And the villains are broad and hateable, and the hero, such as he is, likes to eat his opponent's heads. But this movie is unashamed of what it is, and it even has a rap by Eminem himself on the soundtrack. So I don't know what you might be looking for with this movie, but I'm pretty sure that you'll find it. All in all then, a triumphant first outing for the lethal protector. And luckily for him, it isn't his last either. And we may yet get to that. No promises though. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks!
Hey folks, Funky again. If you like the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell. And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!